thousands of years before the Maya Sauron attempted to conquer Middle-earth, the first Dark Lord Melkor, most gifted and powerful of the Valar, became a force for chaos, violence, and destruction, disrupting and delaying the shaping of lands and seas. Denied absolute mastery over the world, Melkor declared an eternal war against the other Valar and all who served them, seeking to destroy all of creation. Fighting a number of wars over the years, Melkor seemed to suffer his final defeat in the War Forsake of the Elves when he attempted to twist and corrupt the newly awakened elven race, turning them into monstrous orcs that obeyed his every command. Wanting to protect the elder children of Eru, the Valar and Maiar sent their armies east from their homeland of Valinor, defeating Melkor's forces in the initial fighting at Angband and capturing their enemy after the Battle of Atumno. Desiring a swift end to the conflict, the Valar held Melkor with the special chain Angainor before returning west, making little attempt to eliminate the remaining servants of the Dark Lord, which escaped the battle or remained hidden in the lower levels of his fortresses. Servants that included the Orcs, Balrogs, and his chief lieutenant Sauron, all of whom remained in Middle-earth awaiting the return of their master. Imprisoned for three ages, Melkor feigned repentance, asking pardon from the Valar while declaring himself changed and seeking redemption. The brother of Melkor, Manwe, king of the Valar, believed his lies, releasing him from prison over the objections of others. At first, Melkor tried to be helpful and kind, convincing many, including some of the elves who now lived in Valinor, that he was sincere. But eventually, everyone learned the truth when he allied with the Ungoliant, mother to the great spiders, in order to launch a devastating attack that destroyed the two trees of light, plunging the continent into darkness. They then moved north to the fortress of Formenos, where Melkor killed Finwë, ruler of the Noldor Elves, and stole the three Silmaril jewels of the High King's eldest son Feanor before fleeing east to Middle-earth. Outraged by the crimes against his family, the new High King Feanor gave a rousing speech of vengeance, swearing an oath along with his seven sons to recover the Silmarils by any means and at any cost. To begin, this meant sailing east to fight the War of the Great Jewels against Melkor, renamed Morgoth, meaning Black Enemy. Superseding the history of hostility between the brother princes, Fingolfin and Finarfin temporarily unified with the new High King, but soon enough fractured once more when Feanor and his most loyal followers committed the first kin slaying, slaughtering the Teleri elves of the coast to steal their ships for the voyage east across the sea. Of the Noldor who participated, some later repented as they merely sought to defend comrades and did not know the cause of the fighting. In response to their departure and the kin slaying, the Valar sent Mandos the Doomsman who revealed a terrible prophecy, promising tragedy and devastation for all Noldor that left the Undying Lands. Upon hearing the doom of Mandos, Finarfin and roughly a tenth of their people returned to Valinor. Angered by the criticisms and judgments of others, Feanor departed with his faction across the sea, promising to send the ships back for the others once they reached Middle-earth. But this was a lie, as Feanor burned the vessels to prevent the other faction, led by Fingolfin, from following, feeling their opposition to the kinslaying meant they could not be sufficiently relied upon in the coming war. Realizing they were abandoned, the remaining Noldor endeavored to reach the eastern continent by traveling north through the dangerous icy wastes of Helcaraxe. Meanwhile, the War of the Great Jewels already began before a single Noldor even stepped foot in the Beleriand region of Middle-earth, as Morgoth, ruling from his ancient fortress of Angband, was determined to conquer, enslave, and ultimately destroy the continent. Seeking a quick victory, Morgoth gathered the orcs, balrogs, and other wicked creatures that survived earlier wars, and launched a large-scale invasion of Beleriand. Unaware of the larger reasons for the conflict, King Thingol of Doriath, ruler of the Sindar Elves, who chose to stay in Middle-earth rather than head west to Amman, amassed armies from his own lands of Doriath, the havens of the Falas, led by Lord Círdan, the Nandor Elves from Osirian, led by King Denethor, and the Dwarves of the Blue Mountains. Fighting the First Battle of Beleriand on two fronts, their western forces under Círdan were defeated, leaving the cities of the Falas besieged, while King Thingol led their eastern armies to victory, though at a heavy cost, with King Denethor fallen and his people returning home, vowing never to name another king or fight in another of these wars. Becoming secretive forest dwellers who painted their bodies for camouflage, the followers of Denethor became known as the Lyquendi or Green Elves. Having suffered heavy casualties and lost large portions of their army, Thingol made the difficult decision not to rescue their forces in the west, returning home to Doriath to recover as best they could. It was in the aftermath of this battle that the Noldor Elves first returned to the lands of Middle-earth, with Feanor and his followers landing in Lamoth before making camp at Lake Mithrim. 
Hoping to catch them unprepared, the orc armies of Morgoth attacked the Noldor in the Dagor Nuin Giliath for battle under stars, but suffered a terrible shock when Feanor mounted a defense that utterly annihilated the advancing armies. Needing reinforcements, the orcs sent for their southern forces to break off the siege of the Falas and journey north, but they too were slaughtered, this time by Kelegorm, a son of Feanor who anticipated this attack and cut them off at the river Sidion. After ten days of fighting, the Noldor won a complete and total victory, with the last of the enemy retreating to Angband. But this was not enough for Feanor, who was consumed by rage and battle lust, charging forward after the survivors, pressing his counterattack all the way to the gates of Angband, where he found himself surrounded by vicious Balrogs. Undeterred, Feanor fought valiantly, slaying many foes until finally cut down by Gothmog, Lord of all Balrogs, and Lieutenant of Morgoth. Feanor's sons then arrived with reinforcements and drove the enemy back, but were too late to save their father, who used the last of his strength to curse Angband three times before passing away. Perhaps the most gifted elf to ever live, Feanor's spirit was so powerful it burned his body to ash when he died. Though elves were immortal and entitled to another physical body after their spirits went through a period of self-reflection in the halls of Mandos, it was said Feanor would not be reborn until Dagor Dagorath at the end of the world, when he would finally reclaim the Silmaril jewels and give them to the Vala Yavanna so she might use their essence to restore the two trees of light. As if to further underscore the significance of this moment, two other extraordinary history-altering events occurred during the time of Feanor's death, including the first rising of the moon and later sun, created by the Valar to replace the two trees, and the arrival of Fingolfin in Middle-earth, successfully leading a second, larger Noldor faction out of Hel Karakse. Crossing into the lands of Middle-earth as the moon first rose into the sky, Fingolfin led his followers south through the lands of Lamoth, where they were suddenly attacked by an orc army from Angband. Fighting the Battle of Lamoth, the wary, unprepared elves managed to claim victory when Fingolfin's youngest son Argon led a mad charge through enemy ranks to kill the orc commander before he was surrounded and slain. Grieving the loss of a son, Fingolfin and his people marched into the lands of Heathlum as the sun rose into the sky above, beginning the years of the First Age. Fearing this newly arrived Noldor host, Morgoth retreated to Angband and so Fingolfin set up camp in Heathlum, where he met with the sons of Feanor and their followers, uniting their strength while remaining divided into opposing factions, as too much bad blood remained between them. Yet in the midst of all these hostilities, Fingon, eldest son of Fingolfin, had only one thing on his mind, saving the life of his close friend and cousin Maedros, eldest son of Feanor. Shortly after the death of their father, the sons of Feanor were invited to meet with Morgoth and discuss terms of peace. Realizing it was a trap, Maedros arrived with an armed force, but the Dark Lord's retinue was larger, defeating the elves while capturing the Noldor Prince. As the other sons of Feanor were unwilling to negotiate for their brother's life, knowing the enemy would never keep his word, Morgoth tortured Maedros by hanging him from the mountain Thangorodrim. Risking his life, Fingon underwent a valiant quest and with the help of the Great Eagle Thorondor, found and reached his cousin. Unable to open the steel band around his wrist, Fingon cut off his hand and brought him to safety. The Great Eagles did not often help the children of Eru, but did sometimes interfere in moments of great peril, acting on behalf of Manwe, king of the Valar, serving as his scouts and agents. Though Manwe was upset with the Noldor for leaving Valinor, he still had pity for them, allowing his eagles to help them from time to time. Grateful to his cousin for saving his life, and eager to make peace between their peoples, Maedros, heir to Feanor, renounced his claim to leadership, allowing Fingolfin to become the unified ruler of all Noldor in Middle-earth. Succeeding in making peace and strengthening the bonds between their factions, Maedros also inadvertently laid seeds of resentment and future conflict, as his brothers were upset to be passed over in the line of succession. Over the next six decades, the Noldor contacted King Thingol of Doriath and with his permission established themselves across Beleriand, leaving Fingolfin and his followers to settle in the west, while eastern lands were granted to the sons of Feanor. Believing the elves were sufficiently lulled into a false sense of security, Morgoth launched the Dagor Aglareb or Glorious Battle in 60 FA, sending his massive orc armies flooding into the Pass of Sirion, Dorthonion, and Maglor's Gap. Yet the Noldor remained vigilant and were ready for battle, with High King Fingolfin taking charge of their defenses in the west, while Maedros organized his people in the east, driving back the enemy until once again locked away in their impenetrable fortress. Setting up a large-scale permanent siege of Angband, a long period of relative peace followed, allowing the Noldor to expand their settlements, creating great, wondrous cities in memory of what they remembered from the Paradise of the Undying Lands. 
Yet as they thrived, Morgoth recuperated, making new plans for war. Though no large-scale conflicts occurred for the next 400 years, some smaller battles were fought, like the assault on Heathlum in 155 FA, when an army of orcs tried to assail Heathlum from the west, but were thoroughly defeated by the king's son, Fingon. Despite suffering a defeat, this moment served as a turning point for Morgoth, who now realized orcs alone were insufficient to take on his Noldor enemies. Bringing the dragon race into existence, his first creation was Glaurong, the father of dragons, a mighty being that breathed fire and could manipulate a target's mind. Unable to contain his desire for battle, Glaurong disobeyed orders to remain hidden and left Angband in 260 FA, breaking the siege and pushing the elves from Ardgarlin. Yet Glaurong was still young and his scales not yet fully formed, meaning that when the elves organized a counterattack, they shot many arrows into the father of dragons, who fled back into Angband. A century later, in 375 FA, an army of orcs assailed the Haladin in Thargelion, a faction of humans migrating west into Beleriand. Defending themselves until the son of Feanor, Karantir, could arrive with elven reinforcements, the humans realized this area was too dangerous to settle and continued their search for a new homeland. In 402 FA, another group of orcs tried to make their way through the Pass of Aglon, but were repelled by the sons of Feanor Maidros and Maglor, as well as the House of Beor, another human faction migrating west. Grateful for their assistance, the House of Beor were allowed to settle the lands of Ladros. By 422 FA, I King Fingolfin suspected it was time to finish their war with Morgoth, but the other Noldor were content with their prosperous lives, unwilling to risk a large-scale conflict. Yet by ignoring their ruler, they left themselves vulnerable to the surprise attack planned by the Dark Lord in 455 FA. Launching the Dagor Bragolach, or Battle of Sudden Flame, rivers of fire burst forth from Thangorodrim, clearing Ardgalin, which was renamed Anfauglith, allowing the Dark Lord's armies to descend upon the northern Noldor realms. In the east, the sons of Feanor, Kelagorm, and Kurufin were defeated in the Pass of Aglon, while Maglor lost Lothlan and Maglor's Gap. Glaurong, meanwhile, burned the lands near the river Gelion as orcs defeated Karantir to take Thargelion, Lake Helleborn, and his fortress in Mount Rarir. Yet some good news at last came when Maidros, with the help of Maglor's reinforcements, successfully defended his fortress of Himring. Moving west, the lands of Dorthonion were lost when the nephews of the High King, Angrod and Aignor, were killed in the fighting, as was their human ally, Chieftain Bregolas from the House of Beor. Seeking to reinforce Dorthonion, High King Fingolfin and his son Fingon led armies from Heathlum, but were immediately defeated as they tried to pass the mountains and forced into retreat, losing their human ally, Chieftain Hador of the House of Hador. Finally, there were the reinforcements led by King Finrod from Nargothron, the elder brother of Angrod and Aignor, but they too were defeated before arriving, attacked in the Pass of Sirion. Finrod himself would have been killed, if not for his human ally Barahir, the brother of Chieftain Bregolas from the House of Beor, who cut his way to the king, ensuring his escape from harm. Having lost the battle, Morgoth's forces now held much of the north, with survivors forced to flee and take refuge in other realms. Fortunately for the High King, they were able to keep the enemy from conquering Hithlum, but Dorthonion, Ardgalin, and Ladros were entirely gone, save for a small resistance force of humans, led by Chieftain Barahir, fighting a guerrilla war in their homeland of Ladros. Much of the northeast was also lost, save for Himring, meaning the years of prosperity and respite from the War of the Great Jewels were over, leaving only a period of terrible conflict in which the Noldor and their allies fought for their very survival. Devastated by their losses in the Dagor Bragolach, High King Fingolfin of the Noldor went mad with rage, riding his horse Rokalor directly to Angband, where he challenged Morgoth to personal combat. Insulted and mocked before his captains, the Dark Lord had no choice but to accept, donning his black armor and wielding the mace Grand, Hammer of the Underworld. Using his sword Ringil, Fingolfin charged forth, moving so fast he avoided Morgoth's mighty strikes, successfully wounding the Dark Lord seven times throughout the battle. But in the end, he could not keep up the pace and was eventually cast down for a final killing blow. On the verge of being crushed by his enemy's foot, the High King raised his sword one last time to land a final, gruesome strike before passing away. Though Morgoth was victorious, the wounds inflicted by Fingolfin never healed, walking with a limp the rest of his life. Seeking to throw the king's body to the wolves, the great eagle Thorandor descended upon Morgoth, clawed his face, and took Fingolfin's body, leaving it on a mountaintop near Gondolin, where his son Turgon built a cairn. With the High King dead, his eldest son Fingon inherited leadership over the Noldor and Heathlum, doing what he could to build up their strength once more. 
Unfortunately for the free peoples of Beleriand, following the Dagor Bragolach, even the time between great battles was fraught with danger and violence, as seen in 460 FA, when Morgoth's forces at last found and massacred Chieftain Barahir, along with his company of rebels in Ladros, and in 462 FA, when two armies of orcs attacked Heathlum from east and north. Fending off the eastern invasion was Chieftain Galdor the Tall of the House of Hador, a great human ally to the Noldor. But after losing his life in the fighting, he was replaced by his son Húrin, who drove the orcs back to Anfauglith. In the north, High King Fingon led their armies, but even so were on the verge of defeat when Lord Círdan of the Falas arrived with Sindar reinforcements. A rare victory during this time period occurred during the events from 465 to 466 FA when the human hero Beren, son of Chieftain Barahir, fell in love with the elf maiden Luthien, daughter of High King Thingol and Melian the Maya, said to be the most beautiful woman to ever live. Believing Beren unworthy of his daughter, Thingol sent him on an impossible quest, saying that only if he brought forth a Silmaril from the crown of Morgoth would their union be blessed. Engaging in a long and perilous mission, Beren and later Luthien, when she joined him without permission, suffered greatly throughout the journey, even losing many of those that assisted them, including King Finrod of Nargothron, who was tortured and killed in front of Beren by the Dark Lord's Lieutenant Sauron. But in the end, they succeeded in stealing one of three Silmaril jewels from Morgoth's crown before presenting it to Thingol in Doriath. Considered the greatest romance in history, the story of Beren and Luthien was renowned throughout the continent, inspiring Maedros, the eldest son of Feanor, who saw this victory over the Dark Lord as a sign he could in fact be defeated. Therefore, the eldest son of Feanor set about forming the Union of Maedros, reaching out to all their allies across Beleriand for a final great assault against their enemy. Dividing their forces into two armies, Maedros brought his brothers and their remaining followers to Himring after retaking the Pass of Aglon, along with the Dwarves of the Blue Mountains and human Easterling tribes which recently settled the area. Their western army was led by High King Thingon and included the Noldor of Hithlum, the Human House of Hador from Dor Lomen, the Human House of Haleth from Brethil, and the Sindar Elves of the Falas. High King Thingol of Doriath refused to fight alongside the Sons of Feanor after learning they committed the first kinslaying in Amman as did King Orodreth of Nargothrond, who hated two specific sons of Feanor, Kelagorm and Kurufin, because they conspired against his uncle Finrod, indirectly contributing to his death. As a result, these lands did not send armies, with only a few volunteers joining the war effort, like the heroes Mablang and Beleg from Doriath and Gwyndor from Nargothrond. The plan was for the Eastern Army to attack Anfauglith, causing Morgoth to send out his forces, at which point Fingon and his western host hiding in the mountains would flank the enemy position. Launching the Nirnaith Arnoidiad, or Battle of Unnumbered Tears, Maedros was devastated to see his plan fail as Morgoth's spies revealed what was happening, allowing preparations to be made. First, he used his spies to delay Maedros as he marched west before sending a great orc army to assail his forces. At the same time, the Dark Lord directed a smaller orc army west, trying to provoke Fingon into abandoning his defensive position before Maedros was ready. Initially, the High King resisted temptation and was even reinforced by the late arrival of King Turgon and 10,000 warriors from Gondolin. But the orcs then brought out Gelmir, brother of Gwyndor, who was taken prisoner during the Dagor Bragolach. Dismembering Gelmir before them, Gwyndor was overwhelmed by rage, breaking ranks to charge forward alongside his men. Fingon, seeing their lines breaking, authorized a full-scale attack with Gwyndor at the forefront, slaughtering the enemy until arriving at the gates of Angband. Yet this was precisely what the Dark Lord wanted, allowing him to unleash yet another wave of orcs to trap and slaughter Gwyndor's forces, cutting them off from Fingon and the rest of the army, which lost Haldir, chieftain of the House of Haleth, in their retreat. Meanwhile, Union forces in the east were at last making progress, reaching their allies in the west, only for Morgoth to reveal his final ploy, unleashing every last servant of Angband, including orcs, Balrogs led by Gothmog, wolves, wolf riders, and dragons led by Glaurong. Even facing all these enemies, Maedros might have still emerged victorious, if not for the betrayal of Ulfang and his Easterlings, who were stationed in the rear, allowing them to trap Union forces. Serving Morgoth in exchange for the bountiful lands of Hithlum, Ulfang made the Dark Lord's victory possible, but it came at the cost of his life as he was found and slain by Maglor, a son of Feanor. Yet not all Easterlings proved false, as Bor and his followers remained loyal to the Union, even turning against their traitorous kin and sacrificing their lives to slay the sons of Ulfang. Seeing their Eastern army utterly vanquished, Union remnants organized a retreat, leaving the valiant dwarves to hold the line as they were better able to withstand Dragonfire. 
doing all they could to help their allies escape harm. Lord Azagal of Belagost lost his life against Glauron, but was able to land one last blow before he died, causing the dragon to flee the battlefield. Finding one of their lords dead, the dwarves recovered his body and journeyed home to the mountains, marching with a look so grim and deadly none dared get in their way. After their victory in the east, Morgoth's armies united to finish off Fingon in the west, overwhelming their forces in an attack which left the High King dead, falling to Gothmog, the lord of Balrogs. Upon seeing the death of the king, Chieftain Húrin and the men of Dor Lomen charged forth and sacrificed themselves so Turgon, the new High King, and his followers could escape back to Gondolin. Though the chieftain's brother Huor was killed along with the rest of their men, Húrin's fate was even worse as he was taken captive and tortured for decades. Following his victory over the union of Maedhros in the near Naithar-Noidiad, Morgoth's armies swept through northern Beleriand, taking Himring and the Pass of Aglon, thereby forcing retreat upon the sons of Feanor, first towards Aman Ereb, then Osiriand, where they mingled with green elves, while Hithlum was given to Ulfang's Easterlings, under the pretense of generosity, which inevitably turned to cruelty when the region became an open-air prison cut off from the rest of the continent. Plundering Heathlum for all it was worth, captured elves were taken prisoner to Angban, while the humans of Dorlomen were enslaved. Of the three human houses originally allied with the elves, only the severely weakened house of Haleth remained, hidden in the forest of Brethil, while most Noldor survivors made their way to the Falas, seeking protection from Lord Círdan, who continued his own war with Morgoth, sending ships to harass enemy forces along the coast. Yet even the great Sindar cities of Brithombar and Eglarist could not withstand the might of the Dark Lord and were conquered in 473 FA. After the fall of the Falas, Lord Círdan, along with young Prince Gilgala, son to King Orodreth of Nargothrond, led Sindar and Noldor survivors to the Isle of Balar, establishing a refuge for the elves of Beleriand. Gaining great swathes of territory in the north, Morgoth's remaining enemies, aside from southern refugees, included High King Turgon and the city of Gondolin, protected by the secrecy of their location, High King Thingol of Doriath, protected by the Girdle of Melian, a magic spell keeping them hidden from view, and the kingdom of Nargothrond, protected by their strategic location. Other enemies, like the Green Elves of Osirian, were a non-factor as they refused to fight in the war, while the Dwarves of the Blue Mountains were largely surrounded and confined to their homes, having already lost much in their support for the Sons of Feanor. Seeking to overcome the last obstacles preventing his total conquest of Beleriand, Morgoth tortured Chieftain Húrin of the House of Hador, hoping to extract the location of Gondolin, but the courageous man never broke. Enraged, the Dark Lord laid a terrible curse upon his family before fixing him to the top of Thangorodrim so he could watch the downfall of his loved ones from afar. Used as a vessel for the curse, Húrin, son of Húrin, was a valiant, masterful warrior, always seeking to do right, but inevitably bringing death and disaster to everything he touched. Already suffering much by 489 FA, including the loss of his father, separation from his mother, and exile from Doriath, Túrin became chief to a band of outlaws, waging a guerrilla war against Morgoth's forces. Yet this too led to disaster when they were massacred in the sack of Baren Dunwith. Taken captive, Túrin then accidentally killed his friend and rescuer Belig Strongbow when he awoke, confused and disoriented. Reaching a point of utter despair, Túrin was found by the noble Prince Gwyndor who brought him to Nargothron. Yet even this act of kindness led to more misery when the elf maiden Vinduelas, who was betrothed to Gwyndor, fell in love with Túrin, who did not return her affection, but nonetheless ruined their relationship and his friend's hope of happiness. Desperate to finally find his place and make a life for himself, Turgon became a royal advisor, convincing King Orodreth to build a great bridge across the river Narog so they might fight openly against Morgoth in the Battle of Tumhalad. Yet they were not prepared to face the fires of Glaurong, father of dragons, resulting in a triumphant victory for Morgoth's forces, followed by the sacking of Nargothrond and enslavement of its population. Though Turgon was purposely left alive, his advice led to the deaths of King Orodreth, Prince Gwyndor, and Princess Finduelas. The next major realm to fall was Doriath, yet Morgoth had no need of great armies to eliminate this threat, instead allowing the curse of Húrin to continue its path of destruction, releasing his prisoner, who after so many years of torture now held malice and corruption in his heart, poisoning everything he touched. After visiting Heathlum and finding none of his kin, Húrin sought refuge in Gondolin but was denied entry out of fear he was a spy. Yet this, nevertheless, allowed Morgoth to learn the general location of the hidden city. Later, after learning his family was dead, he started a civil war in the House of Haleth, destroying the last of their people in Brethil. 
He then recovered the precious Nauglamir necklace from Nargothrond and gifted it to High King Thingol before finally ending his misery by casting himself into the sea. Yet even in this final act of kindness, the curse of Húrin struck as Thingol decided to hire the dwarves of Nogrod to combine the Nauglamir necklace with the precious Silmaril he received from his daughter's husband, Beren. Overwhelmed by the beauty of the finished necklace, the dwarves demanded the item itself as payment and killed High King Thingol when he refused. Invoking the wrath of the Sindar, the murderers fled back to their mountains without the treasure, but that did not comfort Queen Melian the Maya, who was so devastated by the loss of her husband, she left Beleriand entirely, returning to her homeland of Valinor in the west. When she departed, the girdle of Melian collapsed, meaning Doriath's protection from outside forces was gone, allowing the dwarves to return with an army. Sacking the city of Menegroth in 502 FA, they slew the hero Mablung Heavyhand and stole the Nauglamir, only to be waylaid on their journey home by Beren and an army of green elves, seeking vengeance for their attack. Recovering the Silmaril necklace, Beren gave it to his wife Luthien, but when she died a year later, it was inherited by their son Dior, who succeeded his grandfather to become king of Doriath. Still bound by the oath of Feanor spoken centuries earlier, the sons of Feanor reluctantly tolerated that one of their Silmarils was held by High King Thingol and then his famous daughter Luthien, but would not allow it in the hands of yet another elf with no rightful claim. When Dior refused to give them the jewel, Caligorn rallied his brothers and their followers to march on Doriath, destroying the last Sindar kingdom of Beleriand in the second kinslaying. Among the dead were King Dior and his wife Nimloth, along with their sons Elurin and Elured, as well as Caligorn, Kurufin, and Karantir. Despite winning the battle, the sons of Feanor failed in their mission, as King Dior's daughter Elwing fled with the Silmaril, robbing them of their prize. Leading survivors south, Elwing and her people sought refuge in the mouths of Sidion near the Isle of Balar. After centuries of warfare, Gondolin stood alone as the last elven city of Beleriand, and thus became the singular focus of Morgoth, who already learned its general whereabouts through his former prisoner, Hurin Thalien, but learned more about the realm and made specific plans for an invasion after capturing Maeglin, the disillusioned half-Noldor, half-Sindar nephew of High King Turgon. Leaving the city to search for metals in the mountains, Maeglin was captured by orcs and thus made a deal promising to reveal details about Gondolin's location and help them conquer the city in exchange for sparing his life and arranging his marriage to Idril, his cousin, the daughter of Turgon. Despite the fact marriages between close kin were shunned and she was already married to Tuor, a human hero made lord of the city. Though Idril was unaware of his betrayal, she nonetheless worried about the safety of their people and made a secret emergency escape plan constructing tunnels in case of emergency. Her fears then proved justified during the Gate of Summer Festival when Morgoth launched a full-scale invasion sending orcs, wolves, and Balrogs riding dragons to destroy the last Noldor realm. Among the many heroic feats during the fall of Gondolin, some of the most impressive included Rog's defense of the Northern Gate, where the Lord of the Hammer of Wrath gave a passionate speech, inspiring his army to tear their way through the enemy, making it beyond city limits before they were surrounded and killed. Then there was Ecthelion, Lord to the House of the Fountain, who personally slew three Balrogs in defense of the Southern Gate, while his army killed more orcs than in any battle before. When dragons arrived, they retreated to the Square of the King, where Ecthelion remained to hold off the enemy so others could escape. Though he was already wounded, losing his shield and the use of his left arm, he fought Gothmog, the Lord of Balrogs, in single combat, and soon lost the use of his right hand and sword. Valiant to the end, Ecthelion charged forth and drove his spiked helm into Gothmog, causing them both to topple into the Fountain of the King where they died. As for High King Turgon, he oversaw and directed his forces from the Tower of the King until realizing victory was impossible, at which point he ordered all survivors to evacuate the city while he remained with the House of the King, fighting until the end. Though they put up a valiant defense, dragons eventually knocked over the tower, crushing the High King beneath. After facing off against and defeating the traitorous armies of Maeglin, Tuor joined his wife Idril to help evacuate their people through secret tunnels, aided in their efforts by Lord Glorfindel of the House of the Golden Flower. Yet when they were waylaid outside the city by an enemy army, Glorfindel lost his life battling a Balrog on a mountain cliff, knocking him over the side only to be dragged down by his hair, both falling to their deaths. Aided further by eagles who helped hold off the orcs, Tuor, Idril, and their young son Earendil led survivors south to seek refuge near the mouths of Sirion. 
A few years later, Tuor, joined by his wife Idril, embarked upon his lifelong ambition of sailing across the Sea of Valinor. And though neither were ever seen again, some stories say they completed the journey. And Tuor, despite being human, was treated as an elf and granted immortality so he might live alongside his wife in the Undying Land. Regardless, with Tuor and Idril gone, leadership of the refugees living near the mouths of Sidion fell to their son Eärendil, who married Elwing, daughter of King Dior, thereby uniting the half-elven lines to produce two sons, Elrond and Elros. An avid sailor seeking to learn the fate of his parents, Eärendil often voyaged across the sea, leaving Elwing in charge of their people. And it was during one such occasion in 538 FA that a final great tragedy befell them, when the sons of Feanor arrived with the last of their followers, demanding the surrender of the Silmaril they held. Refusing to give in, the sons of Feanor committed the third kinslaying, considered the cruelest of all because they slaughtered many defenseless refugees. Though Círdan and Gil-galad sent reinforcements from the Isle of Balar, the battle was over by the time they arrived. Despite losing Amrod and Amras, the last sons of Feanor emerged victorious, but once again it was all for naught, as Elwing threw herself and the Silmaril into the sea rather than face capture. Ever a friend to the children of Eru, the Vala Ulmo saved Elwing from drowning and granted her the ability to transform into a white bird, allowing her to fly through the air with the Silmaril until finding her husband's ship. Transforming back into a woman, she explained all that occurred, and after realizing Beleriand was entirely lost, they sailed west to Valinor, where they might beg assistance from the Valar, who were now the only hope for saving Middle-earth from the Dark Lord. A great mariner, Eärendil navigated his way to Valinor, and became the first known mortal to march upon the Undying Lands. Aware he came for selfless reasons, bore a precious Silmaril, and was the descendant of an important bloodline, Manwë and the Valar did not punish him for violating their laws by coming to these lands, and even agreed to raise armies to once again wage war against their old adversary Morgoth. Assembling a great host, their warriors consisted of the Valar, Maiar, Vanyar Elves, and those Noldor who remained behind when Feanor and Fingolfin journeyed to Middle-earth. The Teleri Elves also contributed to the mission by providing ships for the Voyage East, but refused to fight as they still resented the Noldor for slaughtering their people in the first Kinslaying. Reaching Middle-earth in 545 FA, the armies of the Valar were joined by the surviving Elves of Beleriand as well as the remaining Men of the West, while many Easterlings fought for the Dark Lord, whose armies grew vast after conquering nearly all of Beleriand. In addition to possessing great legions of orcs, there were balrogs, serpent dragons, wolf riders, werewolves, and other wicked creatures like trolls, a new form of life made in mockery of the Ents. Engaging in the War of Wrath, a long, bloody 40-year struggle, the host of the Valar eventually reached Angband, causing Morgoth to unleash his winged dragons, the last, deadliest weapon in his arsenal. Quickly devastating the armies of the Valar, for the first time, defeat seemed like a possibility until Eärendil flew into battle aboard a skyship, accompanied by a mighty host of eagles under Thorondor, destroying many of the dragons including Ancalagon the Black, largest and greatest among them. When at last the forces of the Dark Lord were defeated, Morgoth tried to sue for peace, but was instead forcibly captured, with his feet hewn from under him, before the Valar unhoused his spirit and sent it through the Door of Night into the Timeless Void, unable to return to Arda until the final battle of Dagor Dagorath at the end of the world. With Morgoth captured, the final two Silmarils were recovered by the Maya Eonwe, but even now, the surviving sons of Feanor could not forego their vow, sneaking into the victorious camp to kill several guards and take possession of the jewels, at last fulfilling the oath of Feanor. Aware this was a suicide mission, Maedros and Maglor quickly found themselves surrounded and were prepared for a fight to the death, but Eonwe instead allowed them to leave unharmed so no more blood would be shed. Though the War of the Great Jewels was over and they were victorious, finally holding the Silmarils of their father, Maedros and Maglor found no joy or peace. As they lost everything and committed so many evil deeds, the Jewels deemed them unworthy and burned their hands, bringing only pain and misery. Unable to live with what they'd done, Maedros threw himself and his jewel into a fiery chasm, while Maglor tossed his Silmaril into the ocean, living out his days singing songs of lament while he wandered aimlessly through Middle-earth. As the third Silmaril remained with Eärendil, who flew his ship through the sky, the ultimate fate of the three great jewels of Feanor found one in the sky, one in the sea, and one in the earth. For centuries, the Valar did their best to avoid interfering in the affairs of the East, and once again were reminded why this was the right decision when they saw the consequences of the War of Wrath. 
In addition to the countless who died in the fighting and aftermath, the final battle was so devastating, Beleriand itself collapsed into the sea, issuing a pardon to the remaining Noldor of Middle-earth and an invitation to the Sindar. Many of the elves left for the Undying Land, while others, like High King Gilgalad, Galadriel, Celeborn, Elrond, and Orifer remained behind to found new homelands further east. As for the human houses that fought for the Valar, they were rewarded with the island of Numenor in the middle of the Sea of Belagair, founding a new glorious kingdom under Elros as their first ruler. As a consequence of pertaining to a half-elven line, the individual members of Eärendil's family were forced to choose whether they would prefer the ultimate fate of men or elves. Though most chose the immortality of elves, Elros became the only member of their family to that point that chose the life of a mortal human. Though Morgoth was defeated and could no longer directly influence the world, some of his orcs, trolls, dragons, balrogs, and other creatures fled into the east, as well as his lieutenant Sauron, who initially had a change of heart upon witnessing his master's defeat and even offered his surrender to Eonwe. But upon learning he was to be taken west and judged by the Valar, he could not bring himself to display such humility and ultimately fled to eventually become the new Dark Lord of the Second and Third Ages. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Commander Pete J. King, Dela Cruz the Freed, Sir Rick Lone, and Captain Marvel the MBMSC. If you'd like to help the channel, be sure to give a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and click on the links below, or else go to patreon.com slash civilizationx, where you can gain early access to videos, vote on future content, and watch the Patreon-only series, Heroes of Lore and Legend.